I'll just start. Um, I'll keep it short. It's a lightning talk anyway, and we're already way over time. So I'm going to talk a bit about digital accessibility. So what exactly is digital accessibility? Um, it basically refers to the practice of making your wiki accessible, not only to uh, abled people, but also to people who are less abled, such as people who, can, who are less sighted or are not able to hear as well. <coughs> This covers basically everything that's digital, so it's about websites, apps, games, even documents, and also MediaWiki, but it's a website. Um, why is this important? Um, so 13% of the population, so 1.3 billion people, roughly, uh, have some kind of disability. Uh, this means that having bad accessibility means that your website would not be or would be less accessible for at least 13% of the population of the entire earth. Furthermore, it's also a legal requirement in many countries, I think also in Germany and in the Netherlands. And it's, of course, ethically important because you want to be able to, you do not want to exclude this large group of people. Um, so how would you implement these digital accessibility things? Uh, so the, the Worldwide Web W3 Consortium, the W3C, um, have set up the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, which is a large set of documents that details how to implement digital accessibility. And it's based on the POR principle, so the, the POR stands for the first four letters, or the first letter of each of the different words. So your content needs to be perceivable, which means that information must be presented in a way such that a user can be able to perceive it, able to see it. It must be operable, meaning they can interact with the components in some way. It must be understandable, meaning that it shouldn't be too complicated. Uh, and this is also important for MediaWiki. Don't make your texts that you put on there too complicated. <coughs> and it needs to work on a variety of user agents, so not only a normal browser, but also a screen reader, maybe some kind of text-based browser. And you have different levels in the WACG, which corresponds to different uh, complexities in implementation, and also different uh, requirements for your website. So level A is like basic accessibility. Most countries uh, require that. You have uh, AA accessibility, which is a bit more advanced. You have like, uh, maybe you should be able to resize the text and stuff. And you have AAA, which is only for specialized applications and maybe for government websites. Um, but the WACG is a bit large and not very useful. Or, well, it is useful, but not very easy to get started with. So there's the A11Y checklist, uh, it's, which is much more pragmatic. It just consists of a couple of points which you can easily implement, which are directly actionable. Um, so how does this? relate to MediaWiki. So luckily, because MediaWiki is made by the Wikimedia Foundation and is also used by millions of people around the world, it's already quite accessible. However, if you create an extension, that extension does not necessarily have to be, or well, it should be accessible, but it is not necessarily accessible. Um, so some things to keep in mind when developing extensions or writing some wiki text is uh, you should always add missing alternative, or you should always add alternative text for images. So I very often see that that is not the case. Um, and that is easily done by just adding an additional pipe and then alt equals, and then you can add some text, and then it, that will be available to a person who is not <coughs> able to see the actual image. Uh, there are also inaccessible forms, such as forms that use weird labeling. Uh, poor color contrast is also often uh, going wrong. Uh, or design that is not responsive, so that means that it doesn't work on smaller or different uh, screen sizes. So if you're developing an extension, you should keep this in mind, but also if you're just adding some wiki text to a wiki. Uh, so for Wikibase, we had to do this for a customer. We had to uh, look at how how well our digital accessibility was. And so for that, we made a baseline, which is how 
accessible our current wikis are, uh, so the status quo. For that, we used the A11Y checklist and checked each point or looked at each point of the checklist to see if it had been implemented, how well it had been implemented, and possibly uh, suggestions for improvements. And these suggestions can easily be converted to a planning. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, this, this talk was mostly a call to action to let everyone know that you should take digital accessibility into account when working on wikis and when developing extensions. So five minutes, that's it. <laughs> Are there any questions? <coughs> yes. Do we have a question? Yeah. Hi, I'm Joris Dirks from RTXL. Uh, one of the things I found uh, with uh, doing accessibility checks is that uh, the uh, uh, login page, or rather the uh, sign-up page for uh, MediaWiki, uh, is one of the hardest things to make accessible because it's in the core, you can't modify it. Have you run into that page or any other core uh, parts of MediaWiki that um, you can't uh, adjust yourself? Yeah, so there. Well, there are ways to adjust the user login page, but they are a bit hacky. But we didn't do that because I think the login page just uses OOUI directly, and which is already quite accessible by itself. So they already have added a bunch of accessibility <coughs> things to the login page and other core components to make it more accessible. So or did so you find something else that it wasn't accessible? Or something? Yeah, the labels and well, not to get too technical, but there are a few uh, points that are. Uh, we had an external auditor uh, okay. test uh, one of our wikis and found a few uh, issues with it. So well, you can create a patch to core and then fix it, maybe. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jeffrey Wong. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft, and we did a <laughs> we did um, we have a we take accessibility extremely seriously at Microsoft. We have internal tools that um, that always check the accessibility compliance of every single one of our um, services and websites. And um, I think as of two years ago, we had. A or not even the, no even one year ago, for MediaWiki 1.35, we found over 170 accessibility violations um, that we have since forwarded to the Wikimedia Foundation for review. But I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that that's actually unfortunately one of the reasons why we do not use MediaWiki anymore at Microsoft is because of those accessibility violations. So I can confirm Yoris's. Um, findings is that even at Microsoft, it violates um, our accessibility guidelines so severely that uh, it, we had to phase it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that makes your presentation all the more important is that we really need to pay better attention to accessibility for MediaWiki. Yeah, definitely. So uh, MediaWiki is definitely not perfect. So that's also what this talk was about. But I think it's much more accessible than many other websites. So if you're creating a website on your own, you should also take it into account. So I was wondering, um, this uh, uh, pragmatic checklist that you were talking about, is it available somewhere? Yeah, it's uh, a11ychecklist.com org or .com or something. If you just Google A11Y checklist, it's the first result. Okay, that's the one that you're yeah, using. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs>